so great to have you. We had a chance meeting yesterday. I dived right in and and, uh, and grabbed you and put you on the phone because you do something quite interesting in this city, which is host the In the House Festival. So you are you're the go-to person. You're the artistic director. Correct. Yeah. And I understand this is a, a long-running festival uh, that's now ten years running. Yeah, yeah, we're going into our tenth year now. It's kind of a miracle. <laughs> and you've been involved for the whole time. I have, yeah. Did you, as an individual, found the festival, or, or was it started as a collective initially? How, how did it all come about? Um, well, the initial idea came from the friend of mine, from a friend of mine, and um, he brought me and a bunch of other folks on board. And as a group, we put together the very first one, and that was in two thousand and three. And after that. Pretty much everybody was off doing their own projects, and in 2005, I was like, you know what, that was a really inspiring project, and I would love to continue with it, and uh, I took it over and developed it, made it what it is today. And it's an extraordinary service to the city, and your mandate on the on the website is really well written uh, in terms of you know, increasing audience awareness of local performers and creating community. Can you describe, I mean, exactly how the how the festival functions? Because uh, it's very it's different to most festivals that people go to a venue, a bar to see. Yeah, for sure. So, essentially, we have people who donate their living rooms and their backyards to host um, performances. It could be music or dance or theater, circus, cabaret, burlesque, and people buy their tickets and it's like going to the theater but it's in somebody's house so it really creates that intimate vibe that up close and personal both with the performer and with the person beside you and it really creates this sense of community and this sense of belonging within the arts absolutely i'm wondering is this it seems to have a european feel to it is it some is this sort of thing does it happen in europe or in other countries this kind of festival I actually haven't seen anything that has this kind of scope. There, I mean, music concerts often happen inside people's living rooms. There's There are house concerts all over the world. But the fact that we also do all kinds of dance and circus and burlesque, that is kind of a, a new thing, and I haven't seen it anywhere. Yeah, it's just amazing. Going through the website, I, I expected to see a whole bunch of singer-songwriters which is wonderful, but to see the the incredible array was just amazing. And uh, it all comes together. I guess you've probably learned a lot along the way how how to do this over 10 years. Uh, What have you learned along the way? That's probably a a pretty broad question, but... That is a very, (laughs) very broad question. Um, I learned that people are really, really hungry to build community and to have that sense of place and that that sense that they've participated in something unique and um, and cultural, they walk away kind of amazed and wanting to, to see more, and they get introduced to a bunch of different groups that they may never have heard of before, and all of a sudden they become fans of, of a particular group, which is awesome. Um, and the other thing, you know, you really kind of learn how generous people are they're donating their houses they're um there's just a sense that people want to share Mm. and i think that's a that's a really important thing to remember that this kind of thing exists so yeah Mm. i mean other than the the basic boring logistics stuff Mm. (laughs) which you know unless you're a festival producer yourself you probably i don't know could be just passingly curious about Mm. that you know, it's really a constant, the biggest lesson really is the constant reminder um, of what people are willing to give mm. and share. Absolutely. And yeah, definitely opening up one's minds, both the audience and the and the hosts. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, like a host, does somebody approach you and say, hey, I want to have someone and it's sort of the luck of the draw who they who they get it so a surprise for them or do you find people um, say I'm opening my house and I want this or how, how does that part of it work it's kind of a combination so the living room first of all or the backyard has to be big enough so if somebody is interested in hosting and has approached me then I would have to go and check out their space to make sure that it's appropriate hmm. 
Otherwise, a lot of the houses I found because I live in that neighborhood, so I knew all these people and I'd seen their spaces, so I asked them if they would be willing to host. Mm. And then after that, like I kind of, when I see their space, I, I can kind of picture what kind of thing would be appropriate in there. Mm. So for example, if it's a singer-songwriter showcase and they need a piano, then obviously the living room has to have a piano. Mm. Mm. Um, so it's really, it's dependent on a lot of factors and there are certain shows that people really, really, really want to host, so I try to make that happen, mm. and vice versa. If they're really not into a certain genre, then I'll try to make sure that they don't have that in their house. Mm. Um, can you tell the listeners uh, in the past some of the performers that have that have been uh, over the years that, that, that they may be familiar with um, locally? Uh, let's see. There are so many. Oh, yeah. Um, there's well on the music scene. There's people like Yvette Narlock, the Big Good Tanya's, um, high, uh, high Society. Um, I saw C R Avery on there somewhere. Uh, C R Avery, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, the the Sojourners. Um, there's a bunch of jazz musicians like Andre Lachance, Bruno uh, Bruno Hubert. Mm. Um, they've all performed there's the underground circus who mm. usually for the last three or four years have done the finale so we have a giant circus that happens in one of the backyards uh, a lot of the burlesque dancers so the razzle dazzle um, tease group the uh, sweet soul burlesque um, a lot of puppeteers like mind of a snail maggie winston um Dancers, let's see, Lucitera, um, the Now or Never crew, who are mm. hip hop dancers. Um, we've had ballet, Balinese, Korean swing dance. Mm. <laughs> so so like, many, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so many genres. It's, it's hard to list off the the, um, the number of artists. It's yeah, we've we've actually hosted probably around six hundred different performing groups. Wow, yeah, it's extraordinary. And actually, people can uh, your website's quite good for that chronology too. Uh, folks can find that in thehousefestival dot com. And uh, let's bring it to the present. Then we, you have a, a fundraiser that's occurring quite soon, next Thursday, May 9th. This is a, a fundraiser to enable the, the festival to go ahead. Correct. Yeah, I mean it's the the festival is going to happen regardless. Mm, yeah, but yeah. Um, it's always nice to be able to do it with without feeling like you are scraping the bottom of the barrel every time. Yeah, so we're, yeah, the main, the main ninth fundraiser. There's also a celebration of our 10-year anniversary. So it's, you know, it's a combination of celebrating that and, and having live performances, a live auction with amazing prizes, like a trip for two to Paris, if you bid and win that. Um, we have a silent auction. We have ch- chocolate fountains, a lot of roving artists, some mu- mu- magicians, some clowns, um, music, uh, and lots of music. So it should be a really good time. Mm. And so that's at the uh, F- Femi Furlane Hall? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a hall on East Pender, 2605 mm-hmm. East Pender, kind of close to Hastings and Nanaimo. Mm-hmm. And it's a beautiful little hall, and it's a little community hall. I think it's based... Um, it's a northern Italian group that runs it, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, again, highlighting the incredible multicultural aspect of, of, of the whole um, festival. So we got here $40 advance tickets, $50 at the door? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's for the fundraiser. For the fundraiser, that's right. And and so performers who are going to be on that night are some of the ones who are performing in the actual festival? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's wonderful. So we're talking about the In the House Festival fundraiser, uh, May 9th at the Fami Furlane Hall, 2605 East Pender Street. And we've been talking with Miriam Steinberg, who is the artistic director of the festival. Oh, well, I guess we should mention when it actually is. We've oh, spoken yeah. about the fundraiser, <laughs> but the actual <laughs> festival itself. So the actual festival is June 7th through 9th. And the box office opens at 5 o'clock on Friday, June 7th. Great. And then again at noon on the Saturday and the Sunday. And it is a friend, uh, family-friendly event. I really encourage families to bring their kids and start getting their 
their cultural fix right from the get-go. That's right. So. Uh, well, thanks, Miriam, for, for your great information. Uh, www.inthehousefestival.com where there's lots of uh, lots more information about this great Vancouver institution. Thank you, Miriam.